mm-hmm. the segment I think you're probably a little more excited for here. And uh, I think our listeners would be more excited. Yeah. Um, so what we're going to do is, I think we explained last episode, but Dennis is a travel tech for ultrasound. Mm-hmm. Um, he's been doing it for a while. So we're going to let him yeah. kind of speak some facts and give us some information about uh, the basics yeah. of travel healthcare. For sure. So I think um, I'm just going to start off. I've been traveling as a sonographer and radiology for you know, about, I think, going on six years at this mm-hmm. point. Um, I've been all over the, the country, all over the world. I've been to Guam. Um, I've been in a lot of different states. I think I, I would have to even count. I'm not even sure how many states I've been to. Um, if, if somebody, I guess I'm just going to give you guys like a generalization and, and we'll go into more detail in episodes down the road. Um, kind of why I started doing this was, um, I had a, uh, a girlfriend at the time who, um, I started doing travel. She was a nurse, started doing traveling nursing. And she kind of said, um, it's something that she would want to test the waters in. And I was up for, ch- for a change and I actually, um, got my first uh, travel job while I was in Belize on vacation, um, I got a phone call from the manager of the department, um, a, a job that I had applied with with the company. And he was like, he knew, you know, I told my recruiter that, hey, I'm in Belize, but I have Wi-Fi at my Airbnb. And and he called me and was like, I hear you're in Belize. He's like, what are you doing applying for a job while you're on vacation there? And I was like, well, you know, like, uh, I'm just looking to make money. Yeah, I got to make money look for my first gig. I've got to pay for this vacation somehow. Mm-hmm. Um, and so... I accepted that job and, and, uh, we bought a camper and a truck and, and we were off to our first gig in Illinois. Um, I think that if somebody, if I was to give a tip to somebody uh, who wants to get into it, I think their first bet is to find various companies that you're willing to work with, find a recruiter that seems semi-knowledgeable, um, that you can deal talking to, um, because it becomes a, you know, texting email relationship that you have with your recruiter quite a bit. Um, and so you really want to make sure that somebody you can get along with. Now you have to be mindful that like, you know, I know a lot of folks who become friends with the recruiters, which is great. You um, have a free friend, but it's also a business relationship. And so the recruiter, um, depending on what company they work for, they can make money with the more clients they have. And so, yeah, it, they're your friend, but they're also making money off you staying with them. And so you have to make sure that it's conducive uh, for you to stay with them versus going with another company that might have, um, a specific job, which I'll go into the details. Certain companies only ha- sometimes have certain jobs at certain hospitals. And then if that company allows another company to have that job, then they take a piece of the pie. Um, and so you could be losing money by working with a certain company that's having to pay another one for that particular job at that hospital. A lot of little intricacies um, yeah. that deal with this kind of stuff. So um, I know you said you had a a girlfriend at the time that was, she was already traveling. Right. Um, had you heard anything about traveling before you met her? No, you know, you were, I, you were, were you an ultrasound tech before you met her? Yeah. 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 Okay. Uh, so, so you uh, knew. So had you heard anything about traveling before you met her? You know, I had a buddy of mine in, in radiology had dabbled, um, and talked about traveling. We didn't know anything about it. obviously it's exploded, um, recently. Mm-hmm. And yeah. so, but when I was looking into it, I was like watching nurses videos and like just trying to find different information, you know, salaries and, and benefits mm-hmm. and, and different you know, who to work with, who not to work with. And it was just, it's very I, I, I'm biased. I think it was very scarce at that time. It was just six years ago. Um, and, and so like I had thought about it and I had actually talked to recruiting companies um, and they would mm-hmm. tell me different things. And, and I was fairly new at it doing sonography as well and so that was um kind of a i wasn't sure if i was going to be like like it was good enough to make the leap mm-hmm. to going into different hospitals and being like okay run you know and, and keep up with everybody else and and have those expectations um and so i i had known about it um but then once she decided she was miserable or didn't want to be where she was at um yeah. it, it made that leap she she was able to to travel it was about I think it was two and a half hours from where she was staying at the time. Uh, And so she was able to kind of travel, but far enough to where she could still make it home because she was working three days a week. So she should get four days off. Um, And so I saw her dipping her feet and like enjoying it and being like, wow, like I could see so many places, meet so many people and probably get better at doing this um, 
than just staying at this one place and then trying to climb the ladder. Cause that was my game plan initially was to stay there and try to kind of get my master's and get into the business side and climb the, the ladder of management. And, um, and then when she was like, you know, I want to do this. And I was like, let's do it. And then she was like, let's get a camper. Let's, you know, and she had all yeah. these ideas and I, and, um, and I was like, that sounds crazy, but let's do it. Like, and, uh, it was probably one of the, the coolest things that I got to be a part of and they got to do, um, traveling, you know, it's like a, it's like a retirement thing. Like you hear all like the yeah. older folks, are like I'm 65, I'm going to buy a camper and just like travel the world. And I was like, okay, well, I'm, you know, I'm going to do this and I'm going to work while I do it. And, and, um, to be able to go to different hospitals, uh, not working remotely, but being able to go there and just see the areas. And, um, it was an experience. It was, it was just great. Um, and then getting to meet uh, the, a lot of different uh, other sonographers or techs or um, radiologists and work with all these people that are really smart um, and learning from them and learning from each other. Um, mm -hmm. bu building those relationships were, were awesome. Um, also, the protocols that you work from hospital to hospital, you're like you go to a different hospital and you kind of just have to blend in and like remember how they want things done. And, um, that can be a hard thing to do. I mean, it, it, it's all these little intricacies of being part of a traveler, which is something I'm going to touch on, um, our next, or our future episode, just kind of lead you, lead you along here is, is, um, pay, um, and how you can look into your per diem pay. If you have a permanent house, um, in the state that you reside, um, in, in no way am I a tax professional or so I mean, consult your tax professionals, but um, I can give you a little bit insight into the travel world. We're going to go, I think, episode by episode, and, and I'm going to touch on each detail um, of that. But I think this is, you know, this was kind of an interesting question was with, with you, Gage, um, working with, you know, different travelers, being a radiologist and knowing that like there's a traveler in x-ray, that's there's a traveler in ZT, there's a traveler in ultrasound. Yeah. I mean, how that coincides with working with you. And I know as a sonographer, we probably, we work hand in hand, maybe more than other parts of radiology. Um, but you're still doing procedures and, and IR stuff with different modalities. And you go into these places and you know, it's some traveler and you have to trust that yeah. they, they know what they're doing. And, and, um, and I'm sure that's kind of like a, I don't know how, how a rad feels about that. I know. you know, Yeah. That's where you kind of hope the, the hiring, the, whoever does the hiring, kind of did their job did their homework because uh, <laughs> yeah. it varies uh, mm -hmm. i've experienced usually i think only ultrasound and x-ray are the biggest for me where i've experienced travelers because like mm -hmm. you said we work with those two the most because they do procedures we do procedures with you guys mm -hmm. um so they do have traveling ct and mr techs but that's less mm -hmm. i don't deal with them because they just kind of acquire the images and we don't really interact with them right. um so you kind of hope the recruiting person did their homework um, cause I, in my experience, it's been a, it's a mixed bag. Some of the travelers are really good. Mm -hmm. And then obviously some of them are not, not great. <laughs> um, so if they're good, it's obviously makes your job a lot easier. Um, and it's different cause some of them are, especially on the, like the x-ray side of things they they do, like you said, protocols, they do things differently at mm -hmm. either their, you know, their home hospital or where they came from, mm -hmm. um, compared to how we do it where we're at now. Um, so if they're not used to things, you kind of have to, you know, teach them a little bit, which can, you know, it, it slow you down a little bit, but right. once they pick up things, the good ones pick it up fast and then <laughs> it's off to the races, just like it would be with a normal tech that's been there. They're obviously not going to know the small details of the hospital as well as the techs that have been there for, you know, forever. Right. right. Um, but I think it's been highly variable. Most of the traveling techs I've interacted with have been good, mm -hmm. um, but it's definitely variable. Yeah, that's, that's, that, and that's the different perspective, you know, and I've worked with um, different radiologists and they're, they want yeah. to done a certain way mm -hmm. and you're like, okay, like I've got to like not do like something simple, like um, where I've worked at a facility where, you know, we're doing a right upper quadrant ultrasound and, and we don't include the kidney on some of right upper quadrants. We don't include yeah. the pancreas on some right upper quadrants. Um, and then other places where you, if you're looking for a gallbladder, we only do one organ. And yeah. so you're like, okay, so you're like, okay, I'm doing a right upper quadrant, but I'm only looking for this particular organ and that's the only thing that I do. And so it's just little, little things like that that you just got to kind of roll with constantly. And, and, you know, the, the doctors make the protocols. And so you have to kind of, as me as a sonographer, I have to follow along with people yeah. like you who want us to do it the way that you wanted to do it based on yeah. whatever, you know, whatever you guys have come up with. Um, 
and so yeah, I think uh, I think working in the department as a traveler is kind of cool because you don't have to worry about the drama um, of the departments. Yeah. You yeah. don't have to worry about the the um, you know the cat yeah. fights or the what whatever is going on. Yeah. And, you know, and, and so you're I'm there to, to do a job, and I can go off and kind of hang out and do my own thing and um, just get by because most mm-hmm. contracts are typically anywhere from eight to thirteen weeks. Thirteen is kind of the norm. Twenty six weeks is if they're like they really know they're going to need you for a while, um, and they're you know overseas in, in Guam or other countries. Um, you know, you can look up to almost a year um, full contracts just because they know that like we need people here and we don't have any schools around here and the longer I can keep you here, the better for our hospital. And so um, that's kind of nice to not have the drama, but then on the flip side, you know, is you, you, you make a, typically make a little bit more money, but you are by yourself. Um, you don't have any friends, you don't have any family. Mm-hmm. Um, and so you have to really get comfortable um, doing things alone. Or if you get lucky and you find like a cool apartment, that's like yeah. willing to meet you out for trivia nights or, or, um, different things like that, which I've, I've gotten lucky in certain places. And then other places it was like, nobody wants to do anything ever. They're just hang out with their family and they, yeah. and their friends. And you're like, and you're like, Hey, you want to do this? And they're like, no, I don't want to do that. I'd rather stay home. And then they end up like going out together and you don't get invited or something, Yeah, um, which is kind of, you know, it, it's, it's, you know, who, you know, and you get comfortable with who you're with. And so that's just the way it is. Um, so, Six years ago, you kind of made the decision, hey, let's let's do this. Mm-hmm. Um, and you mentioned a little bit about this, but if you're, for someone that's in your shoes, you know, your shoes six years ago, right. where do they go? Like, how do they start looking and mm-hmm. where can they find reliable and decent information about what it, it takes and what it's like to right. be a traveler? Right. I think uh, the first thing you want to do is probably send an email to radtalkwithdg at gmail.com. Yeah. <laughs> we, have a, we, have an ex, we have an expert on staff right, right. and uh, ask us any questions that we can we'd love to help you with that but I, I think the first thing you do is um is is you google various companies um you want to you want to look for um probably three i would say go with three which is is, is a pain in the neck because each company wants three references typically mm-hmm. and so you have to find you know three different people um, for every company through, so you got nine people that have to give you references, which is kind of be a hard time, you know, to sometimes find nine people that want to give you a reference. Yeah. Um, and, and so, but I think that's important because like I said earlier, certain companies only work sometimes with certain hospitals. And so if you have a, you know, X company that only works for, you know, this hospital in North Carolina, and that's where you want to go, if you're not signed up with that particular company, um, you'll never know that job exists. And, um, and that's happened before with me on um, certain companies that I hadn't worked for before. And I randomly was on Facebook scouring and somebody said mm-hmm. they're hiring. And I reach out to the companies that I work for and they say, we don't have that, those jobs. None of them had that job. Um, and so um, the individual who had posted, luckily a post on Facebook, I reached out to and they said, yeah, we're hiring, but they only work with this particular company. And so, um, they were lucky enough to, to have, sometimes I've had that company reach out to me and say, Hey, this usually doesn't happen, but the manager kn- knew somebody who you mentioned to on Facebook and they would like to interview you. And so we're reaching out to you. This is kind of a weird, uh, happenstance, yeah. um, that doesn't happen too often, but that's another way you're just kind of, so you're guessing. So I think that, um, sometimes smaller companies pay a little bit more because they don't have, um, they know they can't keep up with certain contracts that more companies have, but also them paying more um, kind of hurts them. Um, it hurts their bottom line because they're probably um, having to pay those bigger companies. And I'm getting all the, the business side details here. They have to pay those bigger companies a certain percentage to be allowed to have that job. And so yeah. as you, as you small, as you start out, um, the companies will allow you to be, um, they'll give you a certain amount of jobs. And then as you grow as a company, they'll give you more jobs. The more people you can fill in those positions, then they allow you to have more jobs, but they're also, you're also, that company's getting charged, mm-hmm. uh, which could hurt your bottom line too. Um, and so you have to be mindful of that. There's lots of apps out there, which I'll go over the apps that actually yeah. compare. Literally, you can see, you know, job in 
Illinois versus same job in Illinois and the pay discrepancies from one company to the other. Because some companies, my bottom line might be, we need to make 45% off of that travel or that job. And the other companies might be, well, we can well, we can take 30% off of that particular travel or job. And so that gives you more in your pocket. And so you can see those those pay discrepancies, which could be you know, hundreds, maybe thousands of dollars a month. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it, it, it's 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 huge and and this can go super deep and and i think me and gage are going to definitely dive much deeper into these um look forward to how we'll label the episodes appropriately so you can see where what questions yeah. you have and we can hit those um and again you know shoot us an email on social media um and we can, so and we can yeah i think we can so we find the companies right then what ha- what happens when you find a company that you're i'm assuming that you by company you mean recruiter yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. You, so what find, happens when you find the recruiter that you're you're ready to work for, or work with, or whatever? Right. So I'll just give you. I'll just throw like a a big one out there. Medical Solutions is a really big company, um, and so you would go to their website. Um, we're not sponsored by Medical Solutions at all, but um, it's just an example. <laughs> <laughs> um, you go to their website. You'd sign up. You'd make your profile. You would, um, you know, put all your job stuff as you were literally applying for a job. You put your references in there. A recruiter will contact you. Mm-hmm. Um, and you kind of tell them, you know, where do you want to go? What are you looking for? Um, what's important to you is pay. They want to know is pay important to you. you know, it's like, you're buying a car, you know, do I really want a fast car? Do I want, mm-hmm. um, a family car? And so the recruiters gonna say, you know, what's important. And so you say, you know, if, if pay is important to you, okay, then let's look here. If, um, location's important to you, then, okay, we're going to, you might, we're going to look where you want to go, obviously. Um, if, you know, if, if the sun's important to you and you're like, I want to be out on the beach. And so, yeah. okay, then we're going to focus on that. If you say, I just want to go somewhere, anywhere, then um, I think that's harder for them because it's just like, they're just going to constantly like throwing a lot of jobs at you. Um, and it's some places, some uh, recruiting companies, um, you go online and you actually click like I'm interested. And then when you click, I'm interested, it automatically sends your pre-made profile to that particular um, employer to the recruiter who then forward it to the employer. And then they can make the decision to bring you in for an interview or however they want to do it. Other recruiting companies, they will text you or email you however you have it, want it set up when they get new jobs. And so if they get something new, they'll shoot you in a message and you say yes or no. They'll tell you the pay package. They'll tell you the call. They'll tell you, um, everything like that and, and, and as much as they information that they're told um, mm-hmm. and then you decide yay or nay. Um, and then the next step is, um, you know, I think you, you pick several different places because a lot of times you don't get, you know, if I apply for one job in Los Angeles, um, you know, it might be a lot of people applying for that same job. Yeah. And so you might not even get an interview for that job because they look at, you know, they're, they're going to look through your resume and compare it to everybody else's resume. And so you, as a sonographer, you can uh, differentiate yourself with um, obviously your level of, uh, of degree. You know, if you have a bachelor's degree or you have, that might be looked at differently with the recruiter. If you, <laughs> it can, yeah. it can be looked at like, um, or with your, with the hiring manager, excuse me. Um, you know, if that particular hiring manager maybe went to the same school as you, you know, <laughs> they yeah. might might yeah. be more apt to to bring you yeah. in. Um, if and also with sonography specifically, um, your uh, registries. And so, sonography has a wide range of various registries from abdomen, OBGYN, to musculoskeletal, yeah. to um, pediatrics, to uh, breast, to, you know, all of these different things. And so, if they look at somebody's resume and they say, wow like they have a lot of registries or they need somebody who they're like, we know we need somebody who's registered in vascular. Yeah. And so if you're registered in vascular, they can throw out everybody else who is not. Um, and so you can help, help yourself by um, getting more registries. Um, and yeah, I, I think that's, and then you go through your interview and that's when they're mm-hmm. going to call you. And the interviews are very unique, a very unique process because typically an interview, you know, um, they bring you in and you meet people and they show you the department and they talk to you and, you know, you know, you're both interviewing each other, which I think um, we're both interviewing each other in this instance, but I think you're more interviewing them because if they're calling you for an interview, it's like, do you want to be here? Um, yeah. We've looked at your resume. We've looked at the recruiter. We've looked at your stuff. Um, 
usually at the end of the interview, they're like, you know, well, okay, well, we'll get back to you when the offer letter's in. Like, if you get the interview, the job is, from what I've experienced, the job is typically coming. Yeah. Um, and and um, I haven't had many of interviews that, like, they didn't make an offer. Um, and sometimes, um, and usually the offer should be what you anticipated because the recruiting company has all that information already. And so you're just like, sometimes things go really fast. Sometimes you, I've had you, I've put it in. And like, I get a phone call, a phone call that day. And then mm -hmm. the other jobs that I put in for, cause usually I apply for multiple. I'll get a phone call the next day or then the following day or a week from then. And then it's kind of sucks because if you've taken one then you have to turn, then you have to talk to all these other managers that you have to say, sorry, like I just took one two days ago, three days ago. And you're like, gosh, darn it. Yeah. Like, I hope it doesn't yeah. like ruin, ruin my chances with them. And I think that's always something that, you know, if you want a little like tidbit from thing. I always um, throw in there with the managers and say like, hopefully this doesn't like ruin our opportunity for possibly work together in the future. Um, you know, I, you just, you missed me by a day. Like I've already given my word to be somewhere else. Um, but if you still have that need um, in 13 weeks, when I'm done here, maybe we can do yeah. something in the future. You have my phone number, you know, we can, and usually like, I think that works really well. Um, I've reached out to people in the, in the past that, Literally, I turned down a job and then was like, they still needed a need um, and and was able to like either help fill that need or find somebody else to help fill that need or like things like that. It works out really good. Um, also, there's great referral bonuses. So if you uh, yeah. decide to apply for a job, if you want to put my name down, um, I probably worked for, I think I've worked for like four or five, five, six companies or something like that. Shameless plug. Yeah, shameless plug. I'll, I'll, I'll take your referral bonus. <laughs> I'll take your referral bonus. Thank you. Um, and so, yeah, and I think we'll, you know, like I said before, we're going to go into um, pay. You want to know how to yeah. find out how much you're going to get paid? Um, I can go over the intricacies of that, how the breakdown mm -hmm. is um, for your per diems, your uh, housing, your meals, your lodging, your uh, incidentals. Um, I didn't realize how much there was that went into this stuff. It's 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 immaculate, and you know, yeah. um, I, I just I, I got the opportunity to um, kind of work and learn with a company um, while I was in Illinois that kind of that taught me their business because they actually had recruit they had um, nurses that worked for them, mm -hmm. and so they just taught me the intricacies of this business, which was an awesome thing. Like first contract, I get to meet people who yeah. own the company. Yeah. Um, willing to teach me this stuff and i'm just like this is like the best it's like having like it's like you're the wizard of oz and you're you're the guy behind the mirror like you you're the all-knowing person yeah uh, and so to know both sides you can really you can understand both things um and i actually my first recruiter i did make uh friends with and I did actually meet up with him at one point in Las Las Vegas. Um, I still keep in contact with him. He's no longer recruiting, um, but he was a super straight shooter and would tell me different, which I'll tell you, this is another little thing we'll talk about, bill rates. And so the bill rate is kind of is what the hospital and the recruiting company um, get. And usually that's the piece of the pie. Say the bill rate is, you know, just throwing out a number, you know, hundred dollars an hour, two hundred dollars an hour, and so that's the piece of the pie that they divvy up amongst um, the recruiter, uh, recruiting company, and the um, uh, you as the traveler. Um, and so, knowing that bill rate is, I've had I've had hospitals um, managers that knew the bill rate and would tell me the bill rate, um, and then that talk about a negotiating tool. Yeah, um, you're gonna. It's like it's like it's like you're you know the example for gauge if you're a radiologist and you come in there and they say well we're willing to pay you x amount of dollars a year and they tell you the absolute max that they can go yeah and you're like okay like you've given me the first number and so like now i know where i can go mm -hmm. um and it, i think that's a huge huge thing too that um managers do that is really nice for us travelers to to be able to to bank some more money um is a negotiating tool i'm trying i'm looking here to see everything i wanted to yeah. to touch on i think we got so up to this point you know we got you know why you did it you know right. how you went about it mm -hmm. um, so we talked about you know how you get involved mm -hmm. we talked about you know how to apply right so right. i think at this point you we let's just say we we have the 
we've had the interview, right. And we got the job. Right. So I think in the next episode, we can start with like what happens, you know, after you get the job. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then you can pick whatever you want to talk about, whether it's pay or like what happens when you actually show up on day one to these new hospitals, assuming you don't know anybody. It's probably right. a very, it, you know, it's kind of like when we start residency, we don't really know anyone. Mm-hmm. We don't know the people we're working with. So it's very, it can be intimidating. Yeah, for sure. Um, and, you're de- and you're dealing with a lot of like people who've been there for a while or yeah. who have got their ways of doing things. And and then what's really, you know, something I'll touch on again, what's really interesting is, is you go to a place and you're like, man, like if they just did this little tweak here, this little, you start seeing, yeah. I, work for, I think I've worked for like 13 hospitals or something. I don't even know. Um, and you, so you get an idea of like what works and what doesn't. And so, and that would help me probably on the management side and things, but you're just like, you have to bite your tongue because you're like, man, if they just change this little bit in some hospitals, you know, you can talk to the manager if they ask you, you know, what do you think I could do differently? And, and you can kind of yeah. get your opinion. Um, but a lot of times you're just like, okay, I can't say anything because my goal here is to not disrupt. Like yeah. my goal is to, to fit in, do what they need me to do. Um, and not disrupt. But I think that's difficult for me because I don't know, if you know me, like I want to help and I want to give my opinion and I want to um, whatever I can. And and so that's a hard thing for me. Like I have to re- literally remind myself like, okay, just like don't say that they need a whiteboard on the wall right there. That would work great. Like, yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. little like that. It's just like, I don't know. Um, but yeah, yeah. I, I'm, I'm excited to tell you guys a lot of stuff. Um, about this in the future. I think that was a good start. Um, mm-hmm. Definitely. We can also, there's a whole bunch of stuff we can talk about in terms of, you know, yeah. the business side, all that kind of stuff, how you have to interact with, because as you know, doctors aren't the easiest people to work with. Um, <laughs> yeah. so yeah, you have to, and, the, and radiologists can be even, you know, more, uh, they're a different breed than yeah. most doctors, even most of us are. Right. And you guys um, sit in dark rooms, right? For a reason. Yeah. Huh? Yeah, so it, I'll be interested to hear how your experience has been interacting with, uh, right. I mean, I was a resident, so you've had to interact with residents, uh, maybe fellow, I don't know if you've worked with fellows, but um, and definitely attendings. So I'll be interested to hear about how the dynamic goes with, right. um, you know, between you two, because I, I have my own thoughts and my own experiences with how I have interacted with techs and how my attendings that taught me have interacted with techs, so. Mm-hmm. that's also another thing we can talk about i'm sure most people want to talk about contract length and pay and all that kind of stuff so we'll start with the the juicy stuff yeah yeah um, and I, and it, it's super interesting because i mean interacting with yeah i mean your guys's experience with being your experience with being a resident and having an attending over you um and mm-hmm. interacting and my experience is working with residents and um versus the attendings because i've worked with res, you know residents fellows and attendings um different big teaching hospitals um, and, and then even working with one of the radiologists that I was able to like go on a, a trip with, um, to a conference to help better, um, the machine. <laughs> I'm not going to tell you what yeah. machine it is or what yeah. radiologist it was or anything like that. We'll get into that in a different episode, but, um, my relationships that I've been able to develop somehow, um, have been really awesome. So yeah. um, I'm excited to, to tell you guys more about the pay and all the stuff you want to know and also yeah. some fun stuff that like I had a great time getting to be a part of. Um, and like you said, if you have questions, you can email him. Uh, was it rad talk with DG at gmail.com? Yep. yep. Rad yeah. talk. He can answer. He'll it's if it's about traveling, Dennis will be the one that answers. I have no, <laughs> no interest or expertise.